What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Big Fight Fuel channel where we speak the truth, we're honest, and we give our takes on professional wrestling. It is Wednesday night, July 3rd, 2024, and this is your AEW Dynamite review. I am recording this at 11.15 p.m. I just got done wrapping up on tonight's episode of Dynamite, and uh, I got into it late because... Um, I had to work tonight, and uh, I got done work around 9 o'clock, and I have a parade to work for 4th of July. So I'm like, should I just throw in the towel tonight and um, not do a review? So um, I was thinking about it, and then I'm like, uh, I'm going to go home, watch the show, and see how it does. And I would have been a fool to skip this review tonight because... My goodness, what a newsworthy show it was tonight. What a fantastic show. Coming off the Forbidden Door pay-per-view, which was really good. I would say that the show tonight was better than the pay-per-view on Sunday. That's how much I think everybody liked tonight's show. I think, you know, because... There's a lot of people in the wrestling community who clown AEW, and I don't. I don't take those people seriously at all. You know, I I don't take the JDs of the world serious, and other people in the wrestling community. But there are other people who give fair criticism to AEW, and I think they, seeing the Twitter timeline tonight, they were loving tonight's episode. So I think collectively, as a wrestling community. Everybody loved tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite. So that's how good you know it was when everybody loved the show. Um, we had some good wrestling. Don't get me wrong. We had good wrestling, but we set up matches. We got a back and forth promo between Britt Baker and Mercedes Monet. Uh, Hangman Page is back. Fantastic. And then the cherry on top. The cherry on top of the cake is that asshole, scumbag, dipshit, fighting with fans, MJF is back. And earlier in the show, he asked to be in the corner of Daniel Garcia, and he wanted to be there by his side. And um, after the match... After Garcia had lost to Will Ospreay, we knew from a mile away, we knew that um, MJF was going to be turning on Daniel Garcia. If you didn't think that was going to happen, uh, you're a fool and uh, you're not paying attention enough. The beatdown after the match, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. That was probably... The best ending to an AEW Dynamite show since the Go Home show where Sting came down from the rafters to uh, make the save on Darby Allen against the Young Bucks. That was a wild episode, and uh, I think this was an even better ending than that. Um, gosh, there is just so much to talk about. I'll tell you guys, I've been telling you guys for weeks now, okay? I said it first before anybody that... The summer of AEW is going to be insane. You saw the match card for this week's Dynamite, and you knew you had to tune in. Then next week is the finals at the Owen Hart Tournament. Then the following week, or not the following week, two weeks later, is Blood and Guts. So, we know that AEW is about to go on an absolute stretch. An incredible stretch. From now until All In. And I, I am pumped for All In. You're looking at some of the main matches on this card. Ooh, boy. My goodness. But there's so much to get into. We are going to talk about it all. I thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Um, be sure to subscribe to the Big Fight Field channel, please. I am uh, very exhausted. And I have to work a 4th of July parade tomorrow, by the way. Happy 4th of July to everybody that celebrates. If you are going out with friends and family and you're drinking tomorrow, please be safe. 
Be safe with your friends. Be safe with your loved ones. And uh, have a great holiday to everybody out there watching. But uh, if you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and check out the Forbidden Door review. It'll be up in the last 20 seconds of this video. It'll pop up on your screen. So all you'll have to do is click on that. And it'll take you right to the video. And then also, Paul George is officially a Philadelphia 76er. I am excited about it. I am uh, intrigued by the duo of Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and PG-13 in Philadelphia. So if you want all my thoughts on that, that video is up to go ahead and check that out. So... Uh, I'm not going to be here. I mean, I am going to be here long. So that's a lie. Um, Pac versus Brian Danielson. First match of the night. Said it on the review Sunday night. I said this match was going to be better than the Shingo Takagi match at Forbidden Door. I wouldn't say it was better than that match, but I thought it was a damn good match. I thought they had a very good match. Did Pac and Danielson. And Danielson... Like talking like about dream matches um, for him in AEW, he listed Pac as one of them. So this was a big, this was a match that you know Danielson's been looking forward to for a long time, and uh, we've never seen them, uh, him and Pac, mix it up in the ring before um, on an AEW show. So um, they had a damn good match, very technical in the beginning. Very tech, a lot of technical work between the both of them. Pac is so underrated. He reminds me a lot of Chad Gable. Obviously, Chad Gable is getting the better push right now between the both of them. But they, they those two just go in the ring, and they just fucking work. You see Pac in there. He is working his ass off in there. He is giving you um, a great match every single time. I wish they would do more with him than just have send him out there and have him put on bangers. That is great. But I would love to see him in higher feuds in AEW, especially going into All In. Um, All In going to be in London, England. I would love to see Pac on the card in some capacity. Um, if it's challenging for a championship and him winning, um, I, I don't know where he would fit, but... Um, I hope he lands himself a, a good match um, at All In because I know he was supposed to be on that card last year, but he was in America and he had visa issues and he was stuck in America from his hometown, which that was a that was that was a shame that uh, that all went down with Pac last year. But um, I, I hope he has a, a big match at All In, man. Um, Danielson was going to win this. He, Danielson did win this. The last five minutes were excellent. They were grappling with each other. Pac kicked out of a psycho knee. And uh, they were doing a lot of roll-ups. Danielson got the last laugh. And uh, Danielson went for a lazy cover. And one of the, the roll-ups, Pac caught him in, this, in the rings of Saturn. So that was really cool. And, um, you know... Danielson won the match. Pac was disappointed, but this was going to happen. Danielson going to the finals in a very good match against Pac. Um, then we got a recap of the TNT Championship match at Forbidden Door with your scapegoat, Jack Perry, winning the TNT Championship. And Mark Briscoe was out there. Mark Briscoe cut a promo. And he was out there to talk smack on Jack Perry. He said if Jack Perry didn't have an extra bowl of Lucky Charms or an extra bowl of Apple Jacks or something like that. I think he said Lucky Charms. That he was not going to win the TNT Championship. And uh, he's still going after that son of a bitch, Jack Perry. And uh, he says that there's violence he talked about the violence in the ladder match. He said, you know what else has violence? Mark Briscoe mentioned blood and guts. He mentioned the elite. He talked about Jack Perry a lot in this promo. 
And um, he said that he will be the first man on Team AEW for blood and guts. And then he talks about the brutality and the violence. And uh, he gets attacked by Jack Perry, which then brings out Kyle O'Reilly to help Mark Briscoe, which then brings out Kazuchika Okada. The Young Bucks come out uh, walking down the ramp, and then out comes the Acclaim to chase out the Elite. So Mark Briscoe is the first man in Team AEW for Blood and Guts, and I'm down. With that, and if this leads to a match between Mark Briscoe and Jack Perry at All In, I'm down for that too. Do I think that? Do I think that's the match with Jack Perry at All In? I don't think so, but I would be totally cool with that being the the TNT Championship match at All In. That's perfectly fine by me. Willow Nightingale versus Chris Statlander semifinals of the Women's Own Heart Cup tournament. Um, my favorite thing about all of this was the pre-match brawl between the both of them and the pounce that Willow Nightingale gave to Chris Statlander when Chris Statlander falling all the way down to the ringside. That was a phenomenal scene uh, between the both of them and the move that Willow Nightingale pulled off. So the match right here, it was all right. It was clunky in the beginning, uh, messy in the beginning, but it ended up being a fine match. The story of this match here was Stokely had a game plan. And while they were wrestling, Stokely was going to get something for Chris Statlander. And sure as shit, he goes under the ring. He grabs a chain. He distracts the referee. Statlander grabs the chain. She goes to punch Willow. Willow ducks. So Statlander almost hits Stokely. She gets rolled up by Willow Nightingale. And Willow Nightingale is going to the finals. Of the Women's Owen Hart Cup Tournament. So two years in a row. Willow is in the finals. And um, you know. I thought with all this. That no matter who was going to win. Between Statlander and Willow. That the one or the other. Was going to cost each other the finals. So. If Stat won. I would have seen Willow costing her the finals. If Willow won. I would have seen Stat costing her the finals. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen. Mariah May is wrestling Hikaru Shida on Rampage on Friday to go to the finals. So I think that I think that um, Mariah is going to win. It's going to be Mariah versus Willow Nightingale. Chris Statlander is going to cost Willow Nightingale the finals. And Mariah May is going to win the Owen Hart Cup tournament for the ladies' side. So that's how I see that going down. But uh, for their first match in this feud, I thought it was all right. It won't be their last match. Like I've said a couple times um, here on the channel, I think this feud. I think this feud drags all the way out to All In. That's where I see this ending um, on a big stage. So that's where I see it. All In. All, all out. One of the two. Um, so then, after that, was Britt Baker. Britt Baker comes out. Crowd is absolutely loving Britt Baker. And in the first half of this segment, we get the real emotional side of Britt Baker. She says, everybody has three things. A uh, past, a present, and a future. She said, let's talk about the past. The last 10 months have been probably the most I've ever struggled in my life with injuries and my health. And anytime people would say, oh, where's Brit? 
The answer would be, she's injured. She's like, yeah, that's true. But if you know me, a herniated disc and a torn labrum is not enough to take me away from this place that I love so much, AEW. But she said what was enough to take me away was what was going on mentally. And she asked herself in the mirror if she is okay. And she kept saying, I'm good. Then a couple weeks later, she said, I'm good. And then one day, she was feeling nauseous. She went to the kitchen, she said. She tried to open a water bottle, and she couldn't open the water bottle. And and then later she knew that her entire right side of her body was not working. And she looked herself in the mirror and said, I'm not good. And when your entire right side of your body is not working, you have a stroke. So she had a stroke. In the time period that she was out. And she called Tony. And she said Tony. I need to take off. Uh, I can't come back right now. I need to concentrate. On my health. And Tony said. Okay. I hope you feel better. Let me know when you're ready to come back. So. Um, she's out. And now she's back. And she said believe it or not. Sunday night at Forbidden Door was probably the most nervous I've ever been in a long time. And that reason is because I didn't know the reaction I was going to get from you, the fans. And the roar of the crowd and the chance of DMD and the ovation that I got. I owe you everything and for that I will never turn my back on the fans. I'm sure that's not going to be. Um, I'm sure that's not going to be the truth. Because again. She's probably a better heel. Than she is a baby face. But right now. In her new feud. She's the baby face. So. She then talks about the future. She says. While we talk about the future. We might as well talk about a certain individual. Who built this place. From the ground up for years and many years. Of course she's being sarcastic. She says she should feel on top of the royal. She says. Apparently she calls herself the CEO. And the building booed Mercedes Monet. So then Britt Baker. While she was talking about Mercedes. On the Titan Tron, a car pulled up to the to the venue, and um, it was Mercedes getting out of the truck. She was greeted by Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, the EVPs. That her championship celebration is in the ring. There's balloons and streamers in the ring waiting for her. So, they're doing this all while Britt Baker is standing in the way. So, out comes Mercedes. She cuts her promo as they're talking about Forbidden Door. Three minutes into the promo, she's getting shut the fuck up, Chance. And this is a beautiful thing. I feel like Sunday night was the night that Mercedes Monet turned heel. And I, I have this feeling... I don't have the feeling. I know the feeling that it was the fans themselves who turned Mercedes into a heel when they were strongly cheering for Stephanie Vacuor in the match at Forbidden Door. And Mercedes being a heel, I think, is best for AEW uh, with Britt Baker coming back and Mariah May potentially being a top babyface. In the women's division. Uh, I think Mercedes being a heel. And having women chase her. Is what's best for the women's division. Because for an underdog baby face to chase Mercedes Monet. I think you need the right heel to be chasing after. 
And I think Mercedes is the perfect heel to go chase after. I'm not saying Britt Baker is an underdog babyface because she's been there. She's been here since the beginning. She doesn't quite have that underdog. But, you know, I think that down the line, she can have a great feud with some of the other baby faces in the women's division. So, but she talks about how she is a double champion now. And Britt Baker says, yeah, 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 we get it. Listen, we're tired of hearing you speak. And she straight up challenged her to a match at All In. Her first official night back on television. First interaction they have. Britt Baker challenges Mercedes to a TBS championship match at All In. Mercedes says, there is a line of talented women in the back. And you are in the back. And she's like, bitch, what line? And then Mercedes says, bitch, if you say you're a fan, you must know by now what I'm gonna about to say. He says, she's like, when you mess with Monet. Or you pay the, pi you, you pay the price when you mess with Monet. So, this was awesome. The first... Uh, face to face segment. Hopefully, we have more in the next coming weeks between Britt Baker and Mercedes Monet because what we got for their first face to face was awesome. This was awesome television. I am happy to see Britt Baker back, and we know this is going to be one of the matches. And this is one of the big, this is going to be one of the bigger matches. On this all-in card. And I'm hyped for it man. Britt Baker. Against Mercedes Monet. When Mercedes came into AEW. We were like. If we had to pick three individuals. That we would want to see Mercedes in the ring with. We would all say. Jamie Hayter. Tony Storm. And Britt Baker. So. We're getting one of the three. We're getting. Britt Baker against Mercedes. And I think that's going to be fantastic. That is going to be a fantastic feud and the match at All In. So we go to Samoa Joe, Hook, and Shibata. They took on, um, they took on the, gate, the Gates of Agni and Brian Cage. But before that, Chris Jericho kicked out, Hook, uh, kicked out Taz of the Arena. He kicked Taz out the arena. And he was like. Hook. Broke one of the worst rules. In professional wrestling. And it's called. The Cardinal Sin. When you steal another wrestler's finishing move. That is the ultimate sign of disrespect. And he says Hook. That doesn't work for me brother. And what's worse than that. Was Taz, who's supposed to be an unbiased commentator, but he stood up and clapped like a mark. And I legit laughed out loud when he said that because that shit was hilarious. That was hilarious. How, how in the world can you not like Chris Jericho and this learning tree gimmick? This is awesome television, guys. Um, so Jericho is on commentary. The baby faces win, and they get the beat down from Big Bill, Brian Keith, and Chris Jericho to teach Hook a lesson. Big Bill choke slams Hook through a table, and uh, and uh, you know they leave Hook laying. Then. Back later in the show, Hook is in the trainer's room. They come for him again. Hook fights back, and he takes a fireball right in the face by Chris Jericho. So, Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett came down by himself to wrestle in the first round of the Owen Hart Cup tournament. 
They would be wrestling the wild card. And this was, as we've said, for about a month now, Hangman Page. But not only did we get Hangman Page, we got an angrier, darker, more vicious side of Hangman Adam Page. And as good as the match was, I don't like the way it was booked. Hangman came back and had about a 60 40 minute a 60% offense to or 70 65 around there. I think he should have absolutely bludgeoned Jeff Jarrett in this match, you know. No offense to Double J, but I love the story about him being in the Owen Hart Cup, him gonna he's gonna fight his ass off for Owen. He's gonna he's gonna fight his blood, sweat, and tears for Owen. But I think Hangman should have gone in there and absolutely uh, beaten the shit out of Jeff Jarrett. He kind of did toward the end with uh, two buckshot lariats, punches to the face, and a dead eye. But um, this was more like a 65-30 match. Then it was like a 90 to 10, which was what I expected. But Hangman won, and he was greeted in the back by the Young Bucks. And Hangman was like, stop. I'm done being your bus boy. I'm done being uh, your little brother. I am my own man on my own mission. And I am here not to be with the elite. I am here to win the Owen Hart Cup Tournament and go to All In. So, as far as Hangman in the Elite is concerned, I don't think he's going to be in the Elite, but I do think that he will be an honorary member of the Elite inside Blood and Guts because Swerve Strickland is going to be in Blood and Guts and Hangman is going to want to get his hands on Swerve Strickland. So... That's how Hangman gets himself in blood and guts with the Elite, I think. Not because he wants to be with the Elite, but because he wants to fight Swerve Strickland so bad. So that's how I think Hangman gets to uh, blood and guts. And for people that are making predictions of Brian Danielson winning the Owen Hart Cup tournament, that is just simply not going to happen. It'll be this version of Hangman Page versus Swerve as your main event of All In coming up in August. But now it's time. Now we got to talk about the main event. Daniel Garcia versus Will Ospreay. And I kind of don't want to talk about the match, but I kind of have to. The match was good. I wouldn't say this was one of Osprey's better matches in AEW. I think I hyped it up personally too much since last week. But they had a good match. But the story of this here was that, M was that MJF wanted to be in the corner of Danny Garcia. And he wanted to be there to support Danny Garcia. And Daddy Magic let him. And uh, MJF was in his corner. And um, the ending in the match it was MJF wanted Daniel Garcia to use the Dynamite Diamond Ring. And Garcia, he hesitated. And he hesitated, and he still had it in his hand, and he looked at it, and he put it on MJF's finger. He turned around, he hit the hidden blade, Will Ospreay did, and that's how he retained the title. So they had a good match, but the story is here, MJF wanted Garcia to use the ring, Garcia didn't want to use it, it costed him the match. So Garcia... Is sitting in the corner and he is crying his ass off. He is sitting there in tears and Will Ospreay is consoling him 
the same way Swerve consoled Will Ospreay at the end of Forbidden Door. And MJF then gets in the ring. And he's like, look, that's not on you. That's all on me. You worked your ass off in this match. These people still love you. So he's like hyping the crowd up to cheer on Daniel Garcia. And I'm like, I know exactly where this is going. And he hugs Daniel Garcia. And he raises his arm up to the crowd. And he grabs onto his shoulders. And he gives him a low blow. And Garcia collapses. The crowd still somewhat cheers for MJF. But then he hits him in the face with the dynamite diamond ring. And they start booing. And Garcia comes up bloody. And Daddy Magic comes running down. And Daddy Magic gets hit with the Dynamite Diamond Ring. And later on, Daddy Magic starts bleeding. And MJF is just punching a hole in Garcia's face with the Dynamite Diamond Ring. He's punching him as hard as he can. And then the officials start coming down to try and stop MJF. MJF is looking at the crowd. He spits on Daniel Garcia and he gives the crowd a middle finger. MJF then goes on the top rope with Daniel Garcia and he gives him a fucking pile driver off the second rope to the ring canvas. Daniel Garcia gets stretchered out. Will Ospreay comes out. MJF runs away from Will Ospreay. And MJF goes into the crowd. He's getting in fans' faces. He's smacking phones. He's throwing trash on fans. Unfucking believable. This was the best finish to an AEW show all year. This has now surpassed. Sting coming down from the rafters to close out Dynamite. This is incredible. I don't even have the words to say it. And MJF doing the beatdown. He's like, did I restore the feeling? This is your boy. So now MJF is going to kick off Collision on Saturday. Going head to head. With money in the bank. Bold move. Bold move by AEW. They could have just waited for Dynamite next week. But MJF is going to be live on Collision. Kicking off the show. Kicking off the show with a microphone in hand. So you best believe just because of that. And other stuff. I'll be tuning into Collision. Probably on Sunday. But I'll be watching it for sure. Catching up on the show. Uh, but tonight, absolutely fantastic. Top to bottom. Fantastic episode of Dynamite. And it wasn't even the wrestling that was so good about it. The wrestling was good, as it always is. But it was... The Britt Baker Mercedes Monet segment. It was the return of Hangman Adam Page and the change that he's made, and the the return of heel dipshit MJF. So now we have legit baby faces in Swerve, Osprey, Daniel Garcia, um, Brian Danielson. We still have plenty of baby faces. But the issue was, we didn't have plenty of heels. Now we have plenty of heels. We have the Elite. We have Christian Cage. We have Hangman Adam Page. And most importantly, we have MJF back as a heel. And now, I can't wait to tune into what MJF has to say on Collision. And I can't wait to tune in Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday for the Owen Hart Cup Finals. 
but I'm getting out of here. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Comment down below all your thoughts. Hit the like button if you like what you heard from me. And follow me on Twitter, Conlon underscore Joseph. I'm getting out of here. I'll see you in the next video. I'll see you for Money in the Bank. Have a good night. Stay safe. And as always, stay classy. And I'm out. Peace.